We are live. We are in business. Welcome, welcome. As folks are coming in, we're just going to try to bring in some, some excitement here. So um, if you know of a, a corporation doing anything in innovation in the Southeast, just type their name in the comments. You know, if you work for a corporate innovation center or, or an accelerator, just type their name. Uh, um, just type their name in the comments, you know, as we're waiting, you know, for a few more folks to join us. Okay, we see Panasonic. Thank you, Lavonia. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. There's a whole lot of them, whole lot of them. But as, as we're warming up, you know, I got some tough, tough questions for, for the panelists, you know, but I, I'll start off by going a little easy on them, a little easy on them. So. <laughs> I'm allowing them right now just to stress stretch their muscles. Now, sometimes you know, as we're you know using these platforms, we try to ask those this kind of softball questions, like, "How is everyone doing today? Everybody's doing all right." All good. Doing man. good. I love your hat. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That's a killer hat. <laughs> thank you, guys. I appreciate. I appreciate the love there. Am I back now, guys? Y'all can see and hear me, right? Hello, everybody? Yes. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you again. I know. Good to see you again. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. One more minute before we kick things off. One more minute. For everyone who's just joining us, we're just asking if you are familiar with a corporate innovation center or corporate uh, accelerator or anyone who who is based in the Southeast, uh, you know, just type their name in the comments, just type their name and, you know, we want to give them some love and some some support because corporate innovation is not easy. It's not easy. All right, panelists, you guys ready to watch the show? Yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, so uh, this is the Atlanta way. You know, uh, focusing on corporations and uh, diverse led startups, you know, so it's a very uh, interesting topic um, and um, definitely has come a long way uh, over the past, you know, five years, a specifically in the southeast. So uh, to kind of kick things off, I think it would be great. You know, we just do a little roll call. So if each panelist can introduce themselves, you know, um, and we can begin with. Uh, why don't we begin with Willie, you know, and then uh, we'll see what the, how the natural course of engagement or who may step on each other's toes, you know, next. So, Willie, uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your role, and how did you get here? Yeah, thanks so much, I'm Cole, and uh, really excited to be here. So thank you for this opportunity. So uh, my name is Willie Henry. I am a uh, senior diversity program manager at Facebook. I work with the company now for a little over five and a half years. Uh, based out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia, here in Atlanta. And uh, I've had the great opportunity to help us sort of build community and supporting particularly our Black and Hispanic employees as it relates to their overall employee experience. So when you think about uh, after we recruit the talent, you know, how do we sort of uh, make sure they have the best possible experience working at the company through their onboarding experience, professional development, and also community engagement. And so uh, particularly as it relates to our topic today, I um, really uh, focus on trying to support our community beyond the Facebook wall. So supporting those Black and Hispanic Latino employees internally, but also looking at how do we reach our Black and Hispanic Latino community externally, particularly within the tech space, but also just in general communities across the board. And so i um, really excited to be here again today. My background is really, uh, I spent over 15 years basically in HR in a number of different capacities, worked for a lot of large companies and uh, have taken on a lot of different roles, but mostly in, in the recruiting space and now more so on the diversity side. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, again, really I'm happy to jump into more details as we go through the questions, but uh, again, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. Should I throw it to somebody else, M. Cole, or how do you want to do this? Hey, hey Willie, you're a pro. You are a pro, <laughs> you got it. And you guys don't even need me. I'm just, I'm gonna just go, oh no. But yeah, if, if, you, if you you can throw it to someone, you know, uh, All right. choose wisely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can go wrong. Uh, I'm gonna throw it to Michelle. 
Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Arrington. I am an Atlanta native, born and raised, and I currently live here in Atlanta. Um, I am a director with Verizon State and Local Government Affairs and Community Engagement Group. So um, I'm basically responsible for helping develop and implement Verizon's community engagement tactics and contents in support for our company's goals and objectives. Um, prior to joining Verizon, I was actually an attorney um, and I worked in local government uh, here in the Atlanta area. So, um, but one thing I pride myself on is I've held several leadership positions and volunteer in a number of community organizations uh, working on a variety of issues from voting rights to social justice. And so I'm very excited um, to be here um, to talk a little bit more about my and what we're doing to help with diverse startups. Uh, thank you, Michelle. And did you want me to now throw it to somebody? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and again, choose wisely. And I mentioned that because when we get into those self questions, and someone may throw it back to you. So here we go. Um, I guess I'll I'll throw it to Elio. Thank you, Michelle. Hey, everybody. My name is Elio. Uh, born and raised in Italy. Immigrated here in 2005. Did my MBA, and then uh, basically. Uh, only worked at companies that I either founded or co-founded. And then uh, two and a half years ago, I joined AWS, Amazon Web Services, to um, essentially lead a program called APN Global Startup Program, for which we help uh, mid to late stage startups accelerate their growth um, with several resources in product and marketing and co-selling. And um, I'm looking forward to this discussion. And uh, I became a U.S. citizen in 2017. I wanted to share that I voted for the first time 10 days ago, and I was so happy. <laughs> oh, awesome. Congratulations, and, uh, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your vote. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm going to throw it to Darrell. All right. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Darrell Booker. I uh, work with a company you might know by the name of Microsoft. Um, I've actually only been with the company uh, two and a half years um, prior to joining the organization. Um, long stint, um, definitely consider myself a techie, a developer at heart. Um, so I held several, you know, developer program roles, kind of moved up in the rank to uh, CIO and CTO roles. Um, just prior to joining Microsoft, I, I kind of devoted myself to the, the nonprofit community. Um, and it was presented an opportunity to join a team here at Microsoft um, called Tech for Social Impact, which sits under our philanthropy's arm, which has a charter for digitally transforming nonprofits. Um, been doing that work for the last two plus years. Um, born and raised in Richmond, Virginia, but just moved down to Atlanta about two um, plus months ago, and now actually leading a, a new nationwide initiative out of Microsoft as program manager for our nonprofit tech acceleration for Black and African American communities. So I'm pretty excited to be here in Atlanta um, to get to know, uh, you know, as many nonprofits in the area, such as Goody Nation, the community, um, and, 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 and Michelle looking to, to, you know, maybe walk alongside you and see what we can do in the community here. Uh, and I, I guess that only the best for last. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Mae Bradley. Um, I am a senior manager um, in our audit practice um, at Deloitte & Touche here in, the, um, here, in, here in Atlanta. Um, I'm actually a Chicago native, um, so I'm a Chicagoan, but have, uh, I've been in Atlanta now for over 15 years, so I guess I'm an Atlanta native as well. Um, and so, I, you know, I don't have a, a DNI focused role at, at my firm. I, I serve clients, but um, I truly believe that folks, you know, our ecosystem is made up of folks kind of sitting in their own seats, right, and, and being a part of an ecosystem in their respective position. So, I, outside of client service, I just do a lot of outreach and, and support of diverse founders and making sure that. You know, I'm bringing ideas to the leadership of our firm on how we can support diverse-led startups, um, organizations that support diverse-led startups, and so you know, have been kind of the bridge um, at my firm and, and doing some of those some of those things. So really excited to be here. Love this conversation. I am extremely passionate that you know the ecosystem involves everyone. I'm so happy to be a part of this conversation. 
Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Now, I mean, our, our goal is to you know talk about how you know we can create a better Atlanta startup ecosystem. All right. So, but before we can actually do that, um, uh, we need to provide some context, right? So, I would like you guys to help me with this. So, so let's so let's try to set the tone with the perception and the reality for the word innovation. Historically, it's a word that is overused, you know, and, and, and in a lot of corporate environments, um, innovation is an actual bad word, right? So um, can you talk about, can you provide some context to some of the variables and challenges that can impact the intentional and inclusive part of innovation? So, so what are those things that you guys may have experienced yourself that we, that we can share, you know, with our diversity at Startup Founders. So why don't we begin with, uh, with, with Willie again from Facebook. Yeah, and I'm sorry, so I couldn't hear all of that. Uh, could you repeat again, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Sure, no problem. Um, hold on, I'm trying to see. Are you guys still getting that background noise? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, you guys still have the background? Are we good now? We're, we're good. Okay, great. No, so the, the question was um, to provide a little, a little color, a little context uh, on some of the variables and challenges that can impact the uh, intentional and exclusive part of, of innovation, right? Because sometimes we beat up, you know, the corporations. I remember my actual journey, you know, in corporate innovation. It was like, you guys are doing it wrong. You're not moving fast enough. You know, that's why we exist, you know, but we don't understand that, you know, it's it, it can be very, very challenging, you know? So I would love to hear just some of your thoughts on, um, you know, mm -hmm. how, can, how can we go about, you know, providing a, you know, better environment or just some of your horror stories of what, what got you guys to the point of to be intentional around corporate innovation. I got you. I got you. Thanks for, for repeating that. Um, I think there's a couple different angles that I would like to, to chime in on with this question. I think the first one is when you think about your company mission, um, one thing that I can speak of particularly with Facebook is that the, the mission focuses around giving people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. To me, that really is centered around inclusion. And, and, and particularly making sure you have able, uh, particularly within your internal systems, but also ensuring that your global users are also able to have a voice as well in regards to what you bring to the table to ensure that um, the shared experience of using the platform is something that is inclusive ultimately, like people are really benefiting from it, no matter how you identify, where you show up, what resources you have or may not have. And so, um, the mission is really critical in regards to really driving sort of the goal towards truly having an inclusive sort of experience, but also uh, showing up and supporting different communities, particularly underrepresented communities. But you also have to recognize that that innovation takes time. It's not something that's going to happen overnight because the reality is that the playing field isn't equal. Um, that's just the reality, you know, and so privilege plays a big part, biases play a big part in regards to how investments come into play, things of that nature. And so I think it takes people like the folks here on this call, as well as those who are listening in, to really amplify your voice, right? Sharing your voice, sharing your feedback, and really holding companies accountable, including my own, uh, in regards to ensuring that we show up and support the community, we support the needs of underrepresented communities that are so often lacking their resources. And I think, quite frankly, when we think about this year, 2020, which has been really a challenging situation for all of us. Um, but I'll speak to the black community just for a quick minute. You know, you think about COVID's impact on the black community, but also, of course, the racial injustices that have taken place, particularly with George Floyd's murder. Um, that sort of accelerated a lot of companies to really sort of look in the mirror and think about what they're doing in regards to how they're showing up supporting the communities. And so, uh, you know, since that point, you've seen so much acceleration when it comes to showing up and supporting uh, the underrepresented communities, particularly the black community, and really trying to help ensure that we are uh, standing with this community. And so, uh, in some ways, I think innovation is forced uh, at times, and then at some, and then it's also sort of driven by employees as well as partners giving that feedback, ensuring, and, and, and particularly around holding each other accountable. So that's my my take on it. That's interesting. Expert. 
Hey, Mco, I think you're breaking up. Is he breaking up for y'all too? I think you're breaking up a bit. Can you hear me? It's it's, it's just it breaks breaking up. Someone's saying you may need to refresh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll maybe. Bring it. I see your note. You know, um, I can definitely go ahead and, and jump on in. I mean, I agree. I think um, with everything that, that Willie was saying in regards to uh, corporations having to be intentional, um, and it's always good to, uh, you know, partner with organizations on the ground that already are doing the work. Um, when you're a corporation as big as where I think we all kind of work, there are a million moving pieces, a million moving departments. Um, and so uh, one of the job, one of the things I love about this job is that we get to identify, you know, nonprofits and organizations and um, that we want to support that are doing the work and that are the experts on the ground. Um, and so working with someone like a Goody Nation makes sense because, it, you know, Joey can tell us these are the uh, entrepreneurs on the ground. These are the diverse tech startups that we're working with. You know, um, let us let the, in my opinion, let the experts do the job um, and give them the resources they need. And I think corporations have a responsibility to pour into communities, especially communities of color, just considering historical nature uh, of this country and where, where we come from. I think Verizon has done an excellent job um, before even, you know, we've had this social unrest this year and, and pouring into diverse startups. Um, and, you know, making sure that we support entrepreneurs and, and uh, companies of color. Yeah, there are two words that I found interesting that Darrell, uh, so, sorry, um, Willie and Michelle mentioned. One is playing field uh, and the need, you know, to level it. And the other is to be intentional from Michelle. And I think that that's really critical. So just at the innovation level, so general, you know, how do you help companies which are smaller because they are startups, they have less resources to innovate, you have to level the playing field, which means you have to give them more resources and you have to enable them to get access to, you know, more streamlined processes and, you know, additional exclusive um, innovation resources so that they can accelerate their growth. And then you have to be intentional in order to, you know, also give access to people that, you know, historically have had less access to maybe funding, to like, you know, top positions and so forth. And I think that uh, that's really important. So that I, I love those words like, you know, the playing field and being intentional. Yeah, and I just want to jump into yeah, I agree with the, the the level of playing field. I mean that that is that that is so key. And you know, also I think you know Michelle mentioned is um, you know really embracing the communities. I know that's um, a, a real focus on the program that I'm leading, and understanding that you know we're big corporation, we're you know headquartered on the other side of the country, so um, you know it's not a, up to us to be experts on um, what's needed for every community, but instead. Uh, we, need, we need to really rely on those that are supporting the community, that have grown up in the community. Um, and that's going to be the diverse led startups. And I also think as well, it's up to us as a corporation to make any and everyone feel um, welcome in working with us and partnering with us. Um, you know, I, I, I just even know me personally, you know, there was a time that, you know, you never thought you could work with the likes of a Verizon and a Facebooks and, and Microsoft and, and, and so on. So we as corporations have to do as much as we can to make feel, people feel welcome. Um, it shouldn't have to be, you know, if you know someone who knows someone whose cousins follow someone on LinkedIn, you, you just happen to, you know, hear about an opportunity. Um, these things should be really put out intentional that, you know, there is a place for you to to work with us. I kind of want to piggyback off that because I think that's really key, right? I, I think the connection point between diverse founders and, and corporations is, is, is key and, and where that connection point is. Because I feel like we have, you know, 
you know, we, we have some folks in corporate maybe that are trying to figure out, well, how can we be helpful? How can we plug in? What's the best way? And, you know, who, how, how can we find that person that's going to, you know, help us to get connected? And then you have founders who are like, hey, I would love, you know, a, an opportunity for a pilot. or I would love, you know, a, a connection point here. And so I think the key to an effective ecosystem is really finding like how we find the path of least resistance to get those two parties connected, right? In a way that's meaningful, in a way that doesn't feel forced. And so I think that that's just, you know, it, it, it's one of the things that I've been really focused on in my firm because I mean, before I really started embarking on this journey, probably about two years ago, I wasn't sure how to really plug in, right? Like I do, I was interested in wanting to be helpful, but then it's like, well, you know, who do I talk to? How can I, how can I be helpful? Um, and so I think, you know, you know, at, especially in Atlanta, I think we're, we're doing a really good job of identifying those connection points. Hey, Cole, you there? I just want to make sure that. Can you hear me, see me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I, I think I'm good now. Hopefully I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not jinxed with any more technology challenges. All right. So, well, uh, it's mo moving on to some of our, our, our next questions, right? So, um, uh, and, and I know we're talking a lot about pre before we dive into some of the things you guys have done and, and actively actively doing. It, it is important to kind of talk about the the you know pre partnership, pre working with the corporation. You know, it, it's, it's very important to kind of discuss that because sometimes you know, your, your startups, you know, we don't understand um, what it is to work a nine to five or to be a decision maker, you know, at a, at a corporation, right? You know, so um, uh, how, how would you say your company is educating, you know, startups in regards to how do you provide, you know, support? Because there's so many things that we think we know, but we don't know. Like, for example, um, okay, a corporation says, yes, let's do a pilot. You know, there's things such as a vendor application and then you have MSAs and PSAs and go away and all these things and net 30, 60, 90, et cetera. You know, so so how are you providing some education in regards to how you support, you know, startups? And uh, I'll leave that open for anyone to, 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 to chime in. Well, maybe I'll start. Um... Last year, we launched this program, the APN Global Startup Program at AWS, um, because what we noticed is that, uh, I mean, we have a partner, partner program. It's called the APN, AWS Partner Network. And, you know, it's open to anybody. Um, but what we noticed is that, like, it was working primarily for larger ISVs, so larger technology companies like Salesforce and you know others that could partner with AWS at a massive scale. Because also there are like some foundational requirements to partner with AWS and you have to do some certifications and certain investments and you have you know you have to have certain like uh, size of a team and so forth. And so what we found was missing it was a gap in servicing those startups that are doing great that have a meaningful product and traction and product market fit and so forth, but they don't have yet all of the resources that they need in order to compete with those larger ISVs. And so again, coming back to the level the playing field, what we decided is that we actually wanted to facilitate startups in interacting with AWS, but also in um, you know partnering in order to bring their products and services to market. And so essentially we made it easier for them to get access to the resources. So what we did was we built the program in such a way that the foundational requirements, you know, you had to do just a little bit now, then get access immediately to the benefits and then have more time to complete all of those foundational requirements that usually uh, companies that partner with AWS need to do. And so we wanted to sort of switch the order, right? So first you get the benefit actually, then you will complete the requirements and foundational. And so again, that was part of, you know, the, you know, the idea of we want to level the playing field for entrepreneurs in general. You know, I will touch later about like um, what we're trying to do in, in terms of access and equity and diversity. But, uh, you know, I think that the important thing for us was, you know, you, if you want to really level the playing field, you have to change stuff. 
a, a powerful, powerful. So as, as you guys are chiming in, I'm just trying to kind of capture some notes in the chat as you guys are are, are, are dropping dropping gems. You know, so 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 Elio, thank thank you for that. Right. So, um, um, um Michelle, um, I'm curious to see. Um, and, and what is your response to that? And I know, I know, there's some exciting news, you know, that that you'll be sharing with us today. You can choose to share it now. Or you can choose to share it, you know, a little later during the actual discussion. Repeat the question for me. I'm sorry. I want to make sure I hit exactly on what you asked. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. So, um, uh, so the question is, so. Uh, on the startup side, we get very excited about the opportunity to work with a corporation, but we really don't understand what we're getting ourselves into. You know, th there's things that we don't understand, such as, you know, oh, wait, I got to fill out the whole approval to be a vendor. If I'm not already in the system to, to be a vendor, then there's documents to where it may be a MSA or a PSA, or is my business even structured and set up the actual right way to even, you know, facilitate working with this company. So I I've seen companies engage three months, six months, and even done prototype work just to kind of seal the deal. But then once they started going through the actual process, they were not qualified. So what are you doing to, to educate uh, startups on what it would look like to actually work with you? So I will say that is a whole nother department. Um, that's through our supplier diversity uh, program. But mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, um, one, I don't know if people, fully understand, and I tell this with a couple of nonprofits and organizations that reach out, um, make sure you're identifying the right person in the corporation to work with. Because mm -hmm. if you reach out to me about that, honestly, that's not my role. And you know, I can't walk down a hallway to the CEO's office or to the head of the supplier and diversity program. I mean, we're all, we're all of us, we're global corporations. And so knowing and understanding what people's roles, but Verizon does have a very, um, impactful supplier diversity program it's on our website and I'll, I'll drop the link in here as well and it's pretty detailed i mean it tells you everything you need to know um and so i think it's a part of the initiative to educate yourself on the program um, and really taking the steps i know um, we look at these partnerships really as an opportunity to um, help businesses grow and expand their business. And because we know when we invest into minority businesses, we're helping to grow communities. And so then that's really where my role comes in in community engagement saying, hey, how can we further support you? Uh, can we offer mentorship opportunities? Um, can, is there a volunteer opportunity? And what more can we do? Um, but you know, it's something that we believe in. And I also think you know, even for startups, whole corporations are responsible. Look at their diversity on their boards, right? Do they have diverse boards? Do you want to work? They may not really be interested in working with you, or they may talk the talk and not walk the walk. Um, and so I think that's important as well. So look at the diverse diversity on a corporation's board. I'm proud to say Verizon, five of our 10 um uh, members of our board are, are diverse. So, I mean, it's just really looking at it. And what does diversity mean? Um, it's a wide range of things and you have to look at women and veterans and, you know, uh, minorities. So it's it's a wide range of things. Uh, and I'll make sure to drop that link in the chat as well for our link to our page for supplier diversity program. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So, 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 so Janae, uh, we had a chance to kind of connect uh, pr prior to this and, um, um, I, I would like for you to answer uh, this question, but from the perspective of, you know, uh, I think we kind of talked about how innovation is something that is in addition to. And I'm sure everyone everyone can relate to this, right? Where uh, a study show that it's about less than 10% of a company's budget or department budget or division budget goes to innovation, but you're expected to do that work to implement innovation on top of everything else that you're doing. You know, so if you can kind of speak to it from the lens of kind of what you do uh, wearing the Deloitte hat, hat, but what you do as somebody who just cares, you know, from being able to educate and or support startups. Yeah, sure. And I mean, you know, it's like like we were talking about before. I mean, I'm you know, I'm I'm one of those folks. I'm just really passionate about making sure that we're being helpful and that we're not just occupying a space in a corporation or occupying a space in our roles um, that's not really being impactful. And so for you know, for me. You know, like I said, like outside of my client service work, I'm trying to just focus on how I can be helpful in, in, in my role and 
I, I think that's important. Um, I think it's important to, to have that passion for something that you're trying to do even outside of your work because we all get really busy with our day jobs. <laughs> so to, to have that outside, to have that passion um, for something else, you know, in addition to, right, it's always, it's always a, a challenge to identify those folks. Um, but, you know, from, from my perspective, um, you know, I've, for me, it was about trying to navigate the, the footholds of Deloitte to figure out who do I talk to, right? Because I'm, I'm not in that role. I'm not the head of B&I. I'm not, I'm not the person that's thinking of these programs. Like, you know, like how Michelle was saying, like some, some roles are not mine. And for me, you know, supplier diversity was not my role. <laughs> B&I is not my role. Um, and so, you know, it, it, and I say that passion because in order to figure out kind of who do I talk to, where do I start? And so for me, I really just started just being just, hey, like, you know, I don't know if I could bring the firm to you, but you have me. How can I be helpful, right? Like, how can I serve as a mentor? How can I, using my skills as a CPA or, you know, as, as an audience senior manager, how can I be helpful to companies and helping them just look at their books? And I mean, I'm, I'm that person. Like, I will sit and look at the whole Excel spreadsheet with you and we can work out a budget. And so I've always just kind of been that person. Um, who's just been very passionate about making sure that we all succeed, right? And that we all can kind of make up to the next level. Um, and so for me, I have been doing that for the last two years, just trying to navigate not only through um, kind of the diverse startup ecosystem, but also just through Deloitte and figuring out what supply diversity programs do we have? You know, what initiatives do we already have going on within the firm? Because a lot of times um, that partnership in, in the ecosystem really just begins with being knowledgeable about, about what's already out there. And how we can expand programs that are already in existence to be uh, more equitable, to be more diverse, to be more, more, you know, kind of, you know, leading in more. And so, for me, I found a host of things we were already doing around supplier diversity, around um, just making, you know, supporting entrepreneurs, supporting founders. And so, you know, I kind of took that angle of saying, like, hey, I've already kind of navigated the diverse ecosystem space and figured out. You know how, who's already doing the work on on the ground floor. And I think oftentimes corporations will have this enlightenment, right, where they say, "Hey, we want to be helpful. Let's go start our own program. Like, let's go and we're gonna launch a whole new program." Where now we're kind of stepping on the toes of folks that have been on the ground. A lot of times, diverse folks who are on the ground putting these programs together and doing the work. Like, how can we as corporations add fuel to an existing fire? rather than just kind of going in and kind of bulldozing our way and saying, hey, we, we, we have all the great ideas. Um, and so for me, it was finding out on that side, what's going on there, what's working on the diverse kind of, you know, ecosystem side. But then in my firm, you know, what opportunities already exist, right? So we're not recreating the wheel. And, and how can I be involved in the selection process of those activities? Like, I didn't even know we had a Deloitte Entrepreneurship Summit every year for the past 10 years where we're bringing together founders and investors and, you know, helping to make those connections. And so for me, I, you know, I got with the people that do that event and I'm like, hey, like I've been spending a lot of time in the diverse led ecosystem. You know, how do we make sure that this event is equitable? How can I be helpful in spending, you know, hours out of my day just making sure that I can be on that team, right? And that I can be the voice and the face on that team. So, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, we think it's, it's someone's responsibility who has that job title or it's someone's, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's all on you and if it doesn't get done in that corporation and it's, it's your fault. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of times it's just people, everyday people operating in their roles, being helpful and figuring out how we turn that passion into um, creating a new voice, creating a new path in some of these corporations, um, you know, between folks. That's my perspective. No, no. Thank you for sharing that. Hey, you you hit on some really good gems there. You know, Joe and I try to, you know, what you emphasize in the comments. So thank you for that. So, so, so the real. Would you like to chime in? What are some things that you guys are doing, or what you have done personally in regards to being able to educate and support these startups? Yeah, um, very similar to some of the things that that Elio mentioned, and how you you know you definitely want to support these startups. I think you know something that corporations need to realize, and we've been really intentional in understanding that uh, a lot of the time these startups don't have everything figured out, and that is okay. Um, so as much as you know, as part of the startup program, we can give you the benefits. You know, here's you know one hundred and twenty thousand dollars of Azure credit to build your solution, and you know some of those kind of tangible things. Uh, what's also as important is a lot of the consultation that 
is, you know, provided as part of those startup programs. Um, and, you know, high enough level that, you know, these startups are gaining that knowledge on just how to be a really good, you know, business period, regardless of being a partner for us, here's some things that you should be doing, uh, whether you, you know, you hit your wagon with us or with someone else. Um, so I think those things are really important. And then I also think is, you know, setting startups up for success, um, you know, uh, uh, for actually, you know, selling those solutions and getting it out there. So I, one of the things that we, we do is um, you get the benefit of our sales team. So our sales team, you know, once you're at that point, you know, as as an ISV and you have that product and it's ready to go and it's ready for the masses, you're not on your own to then uh, to go out and shop it, um, you know, leverage our global sales force uh, sales team to be able to go out and, and do those things for you. So I think that's, you know, uh, you know, some of the things that corporations uh, need to realize that, you know, every startup is, you know, uh, not going to be that, you know, uh, YC type of and, you know, had, you know, millions and millions from venture capitals and they just have everything so perfect that a lot of these startups are going to come in, uh, you know, really rough and just need that support. And then I think also, too, and I'll paste a couple of links, you know, we as Microsoft, we've had our Microsoft for Startup program. And as we talk about the diversity, kind of back to my point earlier, um, you know, there's, there's it, it, you know, getting diverse people in some of these programs have been tough, you know, um, whether someone can say it's, you know, the selection process or, or what happens with the criteria, or is it um, the lack of awareness, especially to the black community and, and don't know that these things exist, or even if they do know they exist, um, this mindset that that's not for me, you know, I'm not that, com I'm, I'm an Atlanta startup, I'm not a Silicon Valley startup, so I, that can't be for me. Um, so one of the things that we started as part of our racial commitments and, and to be more diverse is uh, a partner growth initiative. And I'll, I'll paste the link. Um, and it's intentionally focused at minority owned, black owned, um, diverse startups and saying, hey, here's a special program just for you. Um, and, and, and even, you know, simple things as, as just the visuals and the imagery. You know, when you go to the website, you see black men, black women, and you just immediately have that connection and saying, okay, at least I can, um, you know, know this is something for me. I'm in the right spot. I don't need to go into this, um, um, you know, kind of with that in the back of my mind saying, hey, you know, am, am, am I going to get denied because uh, they can't even pronounce my name because, of, of course, I, you know, I'm, I, I come from an ethnic background. So I think that are some of the things that, you know, uh, as corporations, we need to do, we need to continue to do and not let this be a moment in time. Uh, we all know the news cycle changes. It may have changed, it, you know, whatever the case may be, but this is something that we need to be doing um, now and uh, for all of our lifetimes, at least. Do you mind if I add, I just want to add one thing. Um, I think it's also sharing resources that you have, even though you're not able to. So I know uh, here we have resources for small businesses, like free webinars. Um, we do the same thing for educators. And so when I have certain partners and nonprofits and organizations we work with, I'll send them a link to say, hey, this may be something you want to share, you know, amongst your ecosystem that may be helpful. Um, this summer we had these free business webinars. Um, we had a small business um grant program. And so, you know, I had to send that information out to certain stakeholders to say, please share with your networks. This is another way to get the word out. Um, you know, so it may not be me being able to hook you up with our <laughs> supplier diversity program, but when I can also show you these other opportunities that we have that you can take advantage of and learn from. Yeah, and I, and I want to... Oh, thank you. Also, sorry, I just wanted to... Uh, oh, no, please go ahead comment on something very important that Darrell mentioned also like uh, how do you choose startups right so you want to go after the best startups and like immediately people and Darrell you and other like you know tech stars type of programs but so sometimes it's difficult I mean so those startups maybe believe like Darrell said oh this is not for me or I don't know if I can get in 
But for us, it's difficult and we have to be intentional in go and find those startups. Because, I mean, like, uh, you know, we sometimes those startups are not in our CRM, right? So we keep track of like, you know, startup lists that we want to interact with. And unless you are intentional, you're not necessarily going to find those startups. We just hired in our um, startup team, um, Charlotte. She is going to be basic part of BD for underrepresented founders. Mm. And this is very important because, I mean, like she has a community builder background. And so her role will be essentially to go find those startups because it's not necessarily, you know, easy to find them. And so you have to be, again, intentional and go find those startups, go find those uh, diverse founders. And as uh, Michelle said, diversity means many things. Um, but you have to go and, you know, um, put efforts because if you just rely on like, you know, the YC or like, you know, investors inputs, you know, you're going to miss stuff. And so you want to be very intentional and proactively go after those diverse founders and help them. So, so, so Willie, um, hey, we're going to pass it over to you to, to drop some gems in that particular question. But before we do, um, everyone uh, who's tuning in, thank you again and, and, and welcome for those who have just joined us to the Atlanta Way, uh, our discussion about, you know, inclusive corporate innovation, you know, specifically around supporting diverse uh, led startups. If you have questions, please share the questions uh, um, in the comments, you know, so we can um, incorporate them outside of the 5,100 questions we have on, have, have on this side. But, we welcome you. If if you are feeling the love and 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 if someone says something and you want to create an a man corner, feel free to put it in the comments as well. But uh, we want to thank our panelists for bringing the great energy. And uh, and Willie, I, I buy uh, I brought you enough time now so you should have a, a dope answer for for this question. <laughs> yeah, I uh, look my 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 um, fellow panelists here have shared just about everything that I can add. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, so shout out to them for providing some amazing knowledge. Uh, I, I would just just plus one to everything, but also really uh, the network piece, like Michelle said. I mean, you know, you may not necessarily be that person who has that access, but you could get them connected to the right person who has access or the right program. Um, so I think the network is really important. So having a discussion like this is really important and critical. Um, that's going to be something I think that will continue to be important because Again, going back to that privilege, going back to who's in the room, you know, again, leveling the playing field, that access and the connection is going to be really critical. So I definitely would encourage all of you to stay connected to us, but also to other folks who are connected to this amazing um, conference that we're having. The one, the two things I want to highlight really quickly on the Facebook side that we're doing, particularly within the developer space, so the startup space as well. Uh, there's a Facebook uh, accelerators program, which uh, is something that allows for those those startup uh, companies that are already sort of in market. You know, you want your product to be able to uh, try to help you grow your product, uh, leveraging Facebook's um, sort of approach, if you will, to product and, and business development. You know, we also give you access to one-on-one -on -one mentorship, as well as to uh, access to a global network of startup peers as well. So it's a really great program. Uh, and I'll also drop a link in the chat here in a second as well. Uh, and then if you haven't already started, there's also uh, Facebook Startup Circles, uh, which essentially is an opportunity for you to, uh, to to enroll into sort of like a mini cohort, if you will, of other startup uh, founders that are looking to try to ideate and or uh, kind of get things going, you know, in regards to like taking their idea uh, to, to market, if you will. And so it's a great opportunity to also get connected to uh, some amazing uh, colleagues who are doing similar type of work as well. And then the last thing is on the supply diversity side, uh, we too also are focusing on supply diversity and it is a great way if you have already started. I mean, again, if you already have your product in market and uh, if there's a way for our company as well as others to leverage it, there is a supply diversity uh, uh, connection point that you can actually sign up to be one of our su uh, suppliers. And, uh, and we're also doubling down on identification of underrepresented suppliers so that because again, sort of accelerate them to the top of the list when it comes to being able to be selected for opportunities to to, uh, to partner with our company. So a lot of great things happening there. Again, so much all of our colleagues here on the call uh, and I'll drop the, in the, the links in the chat. Um, thank you for that. Hey, uh, Willie, uh, 
uh, a Joey is kind of segueing into uh, another topic uh, that we want to discuss. But uh, he kind of called you out and said, "Hey, can you can you share some intel about about the grants that you got provided this summer?" I mean, I, look, yeah. I respect you guys holding back, but but as you move into this next section, you know, it's, it's bragging rights time. It's time for you guys to kind of state your claim. So so Willie, it kind of go, goes to you. Yeah, no, no, I, I thank you for that reminder, Joey. Um, again, sort of a, a, a sort of a spin up based off of some of the social unrest from this summer. Um, you know, we we have like all companies, I think for the most part, have sort of doubled down on the investment, particularly within the black community. And so there's a huge uh, grant that we have been really pushing. It's like a hundred million dollar grant towards black owned businesses. And so uh, easy way for you to apply. I'll drop that link to, I'll have to find it, but I'll, I'll make sure I drop the link in the comments. I'm sorry, in the chat as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just a, a huge, um, again, it's just another channel, right. To sort of support you and, and get you access to funding things of that nature to help you sort of start up slash grow your, your business. So, um, you know, again, great opportunity there. There's so much more, uh, cause we have so many different teams that are sort of attacking this. But it's just we're sort of not necessarily coordinated right now, so it's hard for me to sort of speak to all of it. But as we start to be a little bit more aligned, it'll be a little easier to draw some more information. But uh, the grant is really a great opportunity. It's free, of course. You don't have to pay it back, so um, definitely apply for it. it. Doesn't hurt you to definitely sign up for it. Thank, thank you, thank you for that, Willie. Um, <clears throat> so, so let's hey, so let's well before we go into the bragging rights, there's a, there's a question that I, I, I want to share. This is coming from Jay. Jay, thank you so much for uh, presenting us with this particular question. So to help tee up Jay's question, to, to provide a little scope, there are almost 50 corporate innovation centers, uh, if you will, in the Metro Atlanta area. So, 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 so let that sink in, almost 50. Um, I'll drop a link where you can kind of see see uh, see the list. There's two lists you kind of have to put them together, but it brings you up to about 50. Um, so Jay says, "Oh, I lost your question, Jay. Where did it go? Oh, here we go. All right, what's the percentage data of corporations that have funded founders of color and make the walk versus the talk?" Now, Jay, I'm not quite sure if we can answer, you know, for some. But that'll be some great data points that we can pull together and we can work with Goody Nation to kind of help make that happen. But um, just from your own experience within your corporation, um, and, and, and we're being transparent, we're being honest here, um, how much work do you guys feel like you have made percentage-wise, if, if you care to share, or, you know, um, do you, or do you feel like you still have a long way to go? That's a, a, a great question. Um, I know in and this is a statistic, but I know that in the last 10 years, we spent 50 billion with diverse suppliers. Now, what the breakdown of diverse suppliers means, I personally don't know. Um, that's a great question. It's something, I'm glad you asked that question because to find out, you know, what percentage of diverse suppliers are we talking about African-American on LGBTQ community? Or are we talking about women on um, diverse suppliers? That's a good question, but we have spent 50 billion in the last 10 years. And I think that is significant. Um, and, you know, stepping up during the time, especially during COVID-19 and seeing that small businesses were struggling, Verizon partnered with um, the local initiative support collaboration, which supports minority owned businesses. Um, we gave away $10,000 grants all across the country, it equaled up to about 3 million, I'm sorry, about $7 million that we gave away um, to small businesses. So, I mean, those are some numbers right now that I know offhand, but that's a great question because I would love to see how that's broken down into regards to which diverse suppliers. Awesome. Thank you for that. Anyone else uh, want, want to chime in? Maybe one more or two more persons? Yeah, I can chime in on that. I mean, uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, running my own track as far as making sure from my perspective um, that, you know, the, the folks that I work with in our technology, media, telecommunications industry are, are being helpful. I know we have a supplier um, diversity initiative through Deloitte uh, that I'm not a part of, so I, I won't speak on their numbers. Um, but I know that we have a, we, we have a lot of way to go. Like we have a long way to go to actually define, especially when it comes to supporting Black founders. We have a long way to go when we're talking about you know getting stats on that and, and how much the firm is is currently doing. Um, for me though, I mean I've, I've been on this journey just trying to at least get the ball rolling from a from a TMT perspective in our firm for the past 
I would say six months um, and already have become one of the newest sponsors of Goody Nations, potentially good program and have opened up, um, yay, and have opened up our um, Philly Entrepreneurship Summit uh, where we got, uh, you know, 20 of the 200 attendees that are now, you know, black founders that will be there um, and be in attendance uh, this year. So for me, those are huge wins that, that, I, <laughs> that I feel good about as far as my personal accomplishment and being embarking on this effort um, kind of outside of my day job and just making sure that, that, that we're doing the right things in an active way, right? And not just talking about it, not just being a part of a program, but you know, how can we make tangible impact? Um, and, and I mean, even with the, the folks that we, outside of the folks we got invited to the Entrepreneurship Summit this year, um, you know, this through interviews with those people have already kind of gotten folks interviews on pilots and started conversations with, you know, Deloitte folks in Deloitte to bring on folks as a pilot to, to have within Deloitte. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but, you know, I, I have been on this journey for, I guess, the past six months, and I'm still learning what all Deloitte is doing and how we can kind of put the pieces together within Deloitte to make a kind of cohesive plan. Uh, but that that is underway, but we, we have a long ways to go there. Yeah, I, I would. Um, can you hear me? I would say, like, you know, I'm on the same page, Jana. <laughs> there is a long way to go. Uh, also because, I mean, like, uh, it's uh, it's something that has many facets, right? So there is the diversity of having, like, uh, you know, lots of different skills and experiences and perspective and cultural backgrounds in your team. There is the element of inclusion, like, so that you can provide, like, uh, an environment where everybody feels valued, like, starting with your own employees. But then there is the other aspect, which I think it's extremely important and where, like, you know, there needs to be a lot more progress, which is the equity side. So is it like, you know, the access fair, there are opportunity for advancement for everybody. So I think that that's the area where we still have to do a lot. Um, so we just made like uh, here at AWS a purposeful effort to uh, give underrepresented founders easier access to executive sponsors um here like startups uh you know once they are like on track for faster growth and they're doing like all of the right things will get like assigned an executive sponsor meaning like a, a senior executive at aws that sort of like uh gives access to even more resources and like um you know what we notice is that like in the diverse founders again like you know women led black people led and so forth there was like uh very few that had like executive sponsors and so we wanted to give like you know more equity easier access to those things because again you have to be intentional and level the playing field yeah and and just to jump in and get a piece of this um definitely you know echo everyone says that it's a long way to go and uh almost don't want to see anybody's stats as to you know what what um portion of the ecosystem is going to diverse. Um, I think it's really a time for us to just say, well, let's 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 make a difference starting now. So uh, I, I know at least with Microsoft, we made a commitment to double the number of black and African American owned suppliers over the next three years and a commitment to spend an incremental five hundred million dollars with those. Um, and, and just looking at all areas to one hundred million dollars to help with uh, minority owned depository institutions, which are really key for, um, you know, providing financial access to uh, to our communities and the businesses in there. Um, a separate 50 million dollar fund for small businesses and then another 50 million for the uh, partner growth initiative that I mentioned that's really looking at those diverse partners. Um, and, and with that understanding to all facets, you know, 20 million just to help with the cash flow needs, but then also investing in the training, um, financial management, and that go to market readiness that I mentioned. So uh, I, I think it's just an opportunity for all of us now um, as corporations to just keep leaning in and um, you know, it's all of our responsibilities to keep pushing all these programs that we're a part of. And then for everybody that's out there listening, um, it's on you to take advantage of all these things as well. You know, as much as uh, we as corporations, you know, could do more, uh, a lot of times those that are on the receiving end can do more. So. Yeah, I, I plus one that really quickly. I'll, I'll just say similar investments right across the board, right? A lot of money on supplier um, 
uh, diversity suppliers. Uh, and I think what we're seeing, however, is maybe perhaps one of the several linings with the pandemic um, is the fact that obviously there's a lot more online um, innovation that's happening, right? So more digital innovation, more digital support needed, et cetera. And so I think quite frankly, this is a good time for all you folks who are starting up um, different organizations and companies to really take advantage of these opportunities to derail this point, because this is their time, because everything is sort of digital right now. This is, you know, go, right? Go grab all this money, these opportunities, right? Don't wait because things may change as we open back up at some point. I, I just want to add in that, yeah, I mean, go. I mean, the the times when you had to worry about maybe even how you showed up physically in your presence, that's out of the window now. I mean, it's, it's, it's all digital. You don't even have to cut the camera on a lot of times in meetings if you don't want to. And even if you do, you know, nobody cares about what you're wearing, what's going on in the background. So a lot of the things that I feel like, you know, as 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 minorities that we, you know, uh, lacked a little bit of confidence in and being able to, to put ourselves in certain positions is digital. Now now's the time. Everybody looks the same. You know what I mean? Right now. So. No, hey, uh, gentlemen, hey, you guys hit on something that, uh, that 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 is so true. And uh, just to provide a little, a little, little uh, historic value for you know the startups that are tuning in. Um, we did not have this five years ago, so I, I didn't speak much at all about you know my background and 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 what I uh, and what I do. But uh, I had uh, launched a corporate innovation firm, you know, to solve this problem. There wasn't, you know, a plethora of, of corporations that are saying yes to disruption, yes to partnering with startups like you're having now. And it's not about them being perfect. It's about them being committed to taking a risk to partner with you to learn and grow together. Several years ago, you know, Joy, myself and others were screaming, hey, uh, give us a shot give us a, a opportunity let's pilot we created unique programs just trying to get them to put their toe in the water so now you have uh corporations being very intentional uh you know please don't think it's for it, 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 it's for show and, and look at those who are actually participating in events you know like this uh there is definitely a ecosystem readiness alert happening right now and while the window is wide open, as, 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 as Willie and Darrell is, is mentioning, please don't be afraid to jump in and shoot your shot. There's a lot more support for you now than there has been in previous years. So I just wanted to uh, kind, of, kind of emphasize that for those who may just be getting started and it's, it's uncertain if uh, engaging with a corporation is, is right for them. So bragging rights. All right. So here's your time to you know, brag about, you know, some of the things that you've been holding back, any new announcements, any new initiatives, you know, any potential opportunities to pilot uh, with you all. Or if you want to say, hey, if you want to reach out to to us, if you want to reach out to to myself, et cetera, be specific, uh, et cetera. This is your moment to uh, brag about yourself, but then also make things uh, very clear to the companies of how they work to engage with you if they were, hey, I'm a startup, how do I work with Microsoft, Facebook, Verizon, Deloitte, uh, Amazon, et cetera. So should I call on somebody or someone ready to, uh, you, know, you know, shoot their shot on the bragging right side? Janae? Okay, <laughs> called out. Uh, no, I mean, yes, folks can definitely reach out to me. I'll put my email in the in the chat. Um, you know, like I said, I'm 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 definitely embarking on this journey um, to to kind of figure out and put all the pieces together. But one of the uh, yeah, she, hey, she was about to get some really good stuff. We'll get her back. We'll get her back. You know, so. So a random select, I'm just gonna point over here, uh, Michelle, Michelle? Sure, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I was looking forward to hearing what Janae had to say. I was gonna just steal her talking point. So uh, <laughs> um, definitely, uh, like I said, Verizon's always been uh, committed to diversity and diverse initiatives. Um, so a few things that we just, and I shared, I think with you um, and McCall and, and Joey, um, we just did a, uh, 1.2 billion assets backed security 
um, deal with Loop Capital Markets. And Loop Capital Markets is an African-American owned um, securities uh, program. And so it was a joint book runner deal um, through Verizon. And so it's going to allow us to work with this African-American backed organ uh, partnership organization um, to give opportunities um, for financing. And so I think it's bringing um, awareness when you work with organizations like that. I mentioned um, LISC, the Local Initiative Support Collaboration, which helped us find um, uh, small businesses throughout the country in which Verizon gave money. Um, working with the Goody Nation, uh, Joey and I are supposed to be working on uh, a mentorship program so we can pair up some of the, his um some of the people in his network with some um, experts within Verizon. Um, and those are just a, a few that pop off the top of my head. But one thing that we try to be intentional about, and I think we do a good job is in the, each of our markets, uh, you know, here in Atlanta, we look at different pain points. And one of the things we look at is income inequality um, and divesting into, uh, investing into diverse areas. And so part of that is, you know, of course, giving money, but also, as I keep mentioning, being intentional with mentorship and volunteer opportunities, you know, I don't want to be the person that we just write a check and run. You know, that's why we check in, I check in with Joey, he checks in with me and, and what is Goody Nation up to and what are you all doing and how can we be of assistance? And so I think that's how you build long-term sustainable relationships and partnerships. Um, and I think that's what's really matter if you're talking about being intentional and really changing what we invest into uh, minority communities and in businesses and startups. So, uh, uh, everyone, if you check out the chat, I, I, I dropped the link, you know, while Michelle was share, sharing her, her, her gems, you know, of, of, of the, the press release. So, so be sure to, to check it out and uh, uh, make sure you're, you're actively listening as well, you know, startups in regards to if, if Michelle is already uh, connecting, you know, with you know, community groups, organization, as they mentioned, Goody Nation, be sure to, you know, say, hey, you know, if you're already part of the Goody Nation network, great. If not, I would highly recommend, you know, that you reach out and you connect to Joey. So, Michelle, thank you for that. So, uh, all right, who's next? I need to call you out. Are you ready to uh, shout out your bragging rights? I got cut off before, so I will, I can, I can jump back into what I was, what I was saying. Um, but one of the things I did want to mention um, was, was some news that that's going to be coming out really soon is that the firm actually uh, has given me the thumbs up to across our firm be able to provide our resources kind of pro bono through several organizations like Goody Nation and, and others that are supporting Black founders. We can work with them alongside them um, and provide you know consulting services, advisory services, tax services, audit services, um, you know to the professionals or, or to the founders that are working in these organizations. And so. I'm really excited about that and helping to kind of bring that holistic view of the firm um, to founders. And so that's something that's that's coming down the pipe. Still. So excited about that. Free service. Man, I mean, I, listen, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you, you uh, the, the startups are getting spoiled. I mean, Joey, yes, a lot has changed from 2014 I mean, to now. But but you guys, please when you hear a corporation speak out and say this is what they're doing uh challenge them on it you know and say hey when when does it start uh what is the requirement you know how do i get in line do i have to have do i have to have a fully baked idea you know i mean uh I, don't be afraid once you hear these things remind them of the conversation and engage with them and see where it goes all right anyone else have some exciting news to share I'm well, uh, I mean, uh, I, I just want to well, go ahead. No, I was just saying, uh, I, I guess I, I broke like a couple of like uh, breaking news earlier with like, you know, uh, our um, Charlotte, who will lead like the effort to reach out to underrepresented founders and also the executive sponsorship uh, type of program that we have. Um, we are coming up to our big like uh, yearly user conference reInvent, it's called. And um, we will announce there, like, you know, some new um, benefits to the APN Global Startup Program that I run. Um, but essentially, like, you know, what I wanted to say is that definitely reach out. I'm going to post my email here. Uh, what Darrell was saying, like, you know, sometimes uh, some startup founders feel like, oh, this is not for me. This is like, you know, uh, not right or I may not aspire to this. 
don't think that way be like you know as um aggressive in pursuing your dreams uh as you as you want and can and um and definitely we have lots of different initiatives and um within aws for early stage startups and also for mid to late stage startups so definitely reach out and um and let me know if you need any help all right thank you thank you for that and then if and I, Rod, thank you. yeah just to, just to round us off um i don't know if i have any big news but at least just uh i wanted to make everybody aware of the opportunities um I, I didn't get a chance and i just talked briefly about the program i'm leading and it's a 25 million dollar investment into providing um uh, technology acceleration to nonprofits serving the Black and African American communities uh, across the country. Um, but with that said, uh, my desire is, uh, you know, as we are engaging with those nonprofits, uh, Microsoft and a lot of these corporations, we rely so much on our partner ecosystem. Uh, so this is a huge opportunity for you all that are startups um, that have, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, a particular, you know, skill or technology. I'm actively looking for the diverse startup. So as I'm working with those nonprofits that are in the communities um, to be able to connect them with those other tech startups uh, who have the same empathy for them um, because they, you know, they, they grow up and they live in the same places. So I think there's a huge opportunity where I can be that connector um if there's anybody who has any solutions out there what's really big right now is learning platforms um because of you know covid and so many of the nonprofits have having to switch to doing things digital um so many of them didn't have a way to do that um so there's a, a a big 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 need for um learning platforms and uh the other two things i wanted to mention to be very atlanta specific you know any entrepreneurs out there that you know feel like they still need additional skills we launched something called accelerate atlanta which is all about workforce and, and talent development around digital skills so uh partnering with organizations like tech bridge and europe and goody nation and general assembly on how we can um all commit to and the mayor's office and some and and um uh, uh other large corporations how we can all partner together to build the tech capacity of those that live in Atlanta, um, not only so you can get jobs, but so you can also be entrepreneurs. And then the last thing I, I'll just leave you with, um, uh, some of you probably aware, we're building a couple of new buildings right in Atlantic Station. Um, also, we uh, happen to purchase a, a large site out at Query Yards, just kind of mum the word on what that is, but some announcements are gonna be coming out January. So I said to say, uh, Microsoft is in Atlanta. We're in the community. Um, I'm one of those people that's here that's really eager to, um, you know, get to know all of the entrepreneurs and startups out there uh, so that you can be a part of our ecosystem. Oh, man, Mr. Booker out there spilling all the tea, all the tea. <laughs> you know, uh, if, if you follow what some of the uh, our panelists are, are, are talking about, Hey, you can really tell the, the commitment. You know, Microsoft is putting a lot of money in. You know, you, you have Les Lincoln and you have Cornelius Parker. I mean, the the, the, the leadership here. Uh, you know, gentlemen who have a passion or and or are graduates from HBCUs. Uh, I, I even re remember bumping into Les like, when they were hiring, and they extended uh, their career for this is years ago. Uh, when well, maybe two two yeah two years or so ago, um, they extended their career fair uh, interviewing process to make sure they get more diverse candidates in, you know, so, um, so shout out, you know, appreciate, you know, um, the work that you guys are doing. And thank you for spilling some of the tea. You know, I, I was seeing if you were going to, you know, you know, drop, drop some hints at some of the things um, that you guys were doing that, that was, that was, that was hush, hush, hush. All right. Uh, um, um, anyone else w I want to jump in with uh, any other news and, I, uh, Elio, thank you for chiming in again. We know you dropped some of your gems earlier as well. We appreciate that. But but anyone else want to uh, share anything that they didn't get a chance to share earlier? All right. And and Jay, thank you, Jay. Uh, I was definitely gonna you know call you out on the educational aspects. So make sure you make you make that touch point. You know, uh, uh, touch point there. And and something else I want to uh, share just for our startups there. Um, Definitely would encourage you to um, 
uh, ensure you, you know and understand the focus uh, of each corporation around uh, inclusive innovation. Um, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, and when uh, we were working with a, uh, a top corporate brand a few years ago, Uh, with them, you know, opening their corporate innovation center uh, called the Hangar, that they immediately wanted to engage with the ecosystem. They immediately wanted to just jump in and figure out how to work with startups. Uh, and what we learned was, they were like, um, our, our CIO wanted to make sure that innovation is a part of our culture internally. You know, so they wanted to begin to uh, create an innovate, uh, innovative culture within the actual workplace first. You know, a which was big, and so this was uh, 2017, the end of 2016, in, uh, in the beginning of 2017. Fast forward now, uh, you hear all the great articles being written about Delta. They racked up some awards at CES. Shout out to Nicole Jones, the Global Innovation Lead there. You know, but they started internally. So, a question to our uh, panelists: You know, um, any uh, war stories, a success stories? Uh, about just the um, navigating, creating a disruptive, uh, inclusive, innovative culture within the workplace that you guys would like to share uh, with, with the audience? Can you repeat the question one more time? I'm sorry. Sure, sure, no problem. So uh, we're just talking about how um, corporations uh, have to struggle and deal with um, being able to create an innovative environment internally, you know? So wanted to see if you all wanted to share any success stories uh, or war stories about, you know, navigating, you know, through um, the, uh, the internal barriers of red tape of, you know, getting more participation on board. Now, some of you all may not have the, the, the war stories of some of the corporations that, you know, uh, early on in the Southeast from like 20, you know, 13 to, you know, 2017, you know, but I think it will be beneficial, again, providing more context, you know, to the audience in regards to um, not all innovation uh, within corporations are, are, are created um, equal. Well, I, I can brag a little. I can say I've been working here a little less than a year um, and Verizon is extremely diverse. Um, our ERG um, is called BOLD. Um, and we have a huge diversity and inclusion of standpoint. Uh, I feel at home here, to be honest. Um, and Verizon allows you to bring your authentic self. Uh, and, and they've been doing these programs for years. So I think when we saw a lot of racial and social unrest in June, uh, Verizon just kept doing what it was always doing and even increased it, uh, you know, in regards to money, but in regards to programs and um, internal dialogues. But resources and toolkits and uh, any and everything that we need. And they strongly support our Black Employee Resource Group um, and allow us to, uh, you know, put on programming that that matters to everyone. Um, and so it's it's really the conversations there. Um, I think I think to someone, I can't remember who said it, but, you know, even more now than ever, we can go and say, hey, you know, can we get some more money to support this? Um, we need to invest into communities of color and we are, are getting that support. And so I'm really proud of Verizon and to be a part of a team like that. It, and, and if I could just jump in, um, very very similar to Michelle at Microsoft, uh, we have BAM, Blacks at Microsoft. Um, and it's very, it's very ironic. So un unfortunately, globally, um, Blacks make up the smallest percentage of minorities at Microsoft but we have the largest ERG. So I think that really speaks for how the employees are saying, we're gonna to come together and be a voice. Uh, we have 18 chapters across the country and our BAM leadership is extremely well respected all the way up to the CEO level, um, almost to the point that, you know, uh, all of the work that we're doing out of our racial justice commitments, you know, there's a, you know, a BAM check of approval. So I think it's, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's on kind of the employees to kind of galvanize together and say, you know, how can we be, you know, this uh, positive disruption? Um, and I think also too is, you know, it, it takes, I think individuals like that we have on the call, like, and, and Janae mentioned, like she, she's not even part of a, a, a DNI initiative, but she's inserting herself. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I know what I saw firsthand. I think we probably saw the same thing that when we have a, a, a issue around the racial injustice and what we saw happen this summer, um, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people, especially when we look at allies, came to a realization that, hey, I don't know. I don't know what's best. I've never been a black man, black woman. I don't know what they're facing. Um, and honestly, it takes the people like us to kind of step up and say, well, let me help you. Let me help you figure out what we need to do. Let me be that particular person within the organization to help move us, move us along. Um, and, and I, I, and I think it just needs to be more of those people that continue to stand up and say, you know, let, let, let me help show the way of what we can do to be, you know, uh, you know, just better in this space. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Anyone else would like to chime in there? I, 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 one thing that I'm, I'm learning from you all is that there's, and I'm, I'm typing this as, 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 I'm, as I'm speaking, but that there's a, a lot of power uh, within these employee resource groups to kind of help create, you know, shift and change, which it may not have really been been a thing in previous years, especially around this dirty word of innovation, you know, so no, that's definitely great, a gr great a, a, for me to learn you know, now in 2020 and, and, and beyond. But uh, anyone else like, like to chime in around that particular topic? We got bold, we got bam. I mean, you know, <laughs> what, what else we got? Um, I can, I mean, I can chime in. I mean, I, you know, our, our, our firm has a, a number of different diversity initiatives. And, and, and what I like about what Darnell was saying or, or Darrell was saying was, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's having the organization and the institutional stuff, but it's also just individuals, right, being bold. Um, and, ta and taking the charge and, I mean, you know, our firm, you know, we obviously have like our Black Action Council and then we have steering committees that are focused on DNI for our Inclusion Council and then we have our Black Employee Network um, and, and, and all of those kind of have um, like, like a layer above them to make sure there's not just Black folk running the, and they're running the initiatives, there's folks in the firm, leadership folks that are helping to kind of steer the conversation and make sure that everyone's supporting from a holistic perspective, but um, and I mean, I'm I'm a part of some of those councils. I'm actually our, our president of our Black Employee Network, um, and and so you know, all those are all those are great. What I found is, you know, I, I like being a part of those conversations and a part of those initiatives to know what are the opportunities, right? What are the opportunities to partner across the firm? Um, but I also, am, if I'm passionate about something, an organization or whatever, I I, I want to be in a place, and I, and I and I I love that I'm in a place. Where if I have an idea and I want to say, hey, I want to support Joey's organization, it doesn't fall into any pillar. There's no, you know, there's no, there's no organization that's already kind of signed off one in their budget. But I can just, you know, call up our um, our, our office managing partner and say, hey, I want you to meet him, and we can y'all get on the phone. And, and we did that just to, you know, he's like, hey, I, I want to meet this Joey to talk about, get on the phone and just talk, right? And I think that that's important, right, folks? Just kind of having that audacity right and that and that and that boldness to just say hey it might not be a part of our budget or it might not be a part of our strategy or whatever but i am interested really in this and can we do this thing i think a lot of times progress is held up a lot of times because we have to go through kind of all of the funnels um <laughs> but when, when really it, you know if we can make an effort and we can and folks can know that person they can get me this meeting sometimes you need that too No, no th thank you for sharing that. You know, definitely, uh, I, I like your comment about it's also about individuals being bold, you know, and, and stepping out there, you know, which I think you're definitely a testament of, of doing that, you know, within and even outside of your, your, your current scope. So, sh so shout out to you for doing that. And, and hopefully uh, there also are some other, you know, corporate innovators or aspiring corporate innovators who want to, you know, shake things up a little bit that, that that's tuning in that is getting some some good tips, talking points, and best practices from you all. So, all right, everyone, we are coming in within our, uh, uh, we, we have uh, less than 10 minutes now, you know, kind of to, to round things out, to close out um, our actual panel, you know, the Atlanta way, you know, corporations and diverse led startups, you know, so if you have any uh, uh, other questions, please put them into the chat. You know, our panelists have been great. You know, let's, let's give them a round of applause, you know, for all the gems they've been dropping. It's definitely been food for my soul as well. It's really great to see where corporate innovation is today about being intentional about, you know, supporting diverse led startups, you know, and, and something that was mentioned earlier, um, I believe it was 
uh, um, yes, it, it was Darrell who mentioned this. Um, this isn't easy. You know, this work isn't easy, um, you know, but when you have organizations committing to it, right? Um, I remember being in, in conversations, I'll tell you guys a quick little story, uh, that the hyponymous that you guys know today as um, was a physical space in the basement of the Biltmore, you know, where a lot of us uh, were almost born out of that space. The ideas we had for companies, even before ATV was ATV, you know, um, it was inspired by hyponymous being a, a community where you would have corporations and startups in there just jamming, creating and trying to figure things out, you know, right? You know, so they actually see, you know, fast forward to today that, you know, corporations are being uh, yeah, serious. They're not necessarily uh, doing a lot of marketing spend or just ribbon cutting, just saying, yes, we're serious about supporting uh, diverse led startups. Yes, we put the money behind it. And we have diverse, you know, led leadership, you know, at the forefront, which is major key. So just wanted to emphasize the growth of just being a, a spectator and a participant. And I'm, I'm just joyful. I'm just, I'm just very, very excited. All right, let's see any questions we have going on here. Oh, tons of gems, agreed, a very awesome conversation. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, so I just want to say, I mean, this has been an incredibly uh, tough year uh, for many. And, you know, like uh, and there's been also clearly a powerful uh, social movement. Um, and so this for us has been like really top of mind across the company. And we have had like some really painful discussions even. No? So because, I mean, some people are not aware, some people like, you know, don't understand you know, the extent of like uh, the injustice and, you know, leadership, I, you know, we can always do more and we have to do more in hiring more like diverse talent. But the fact that there were like painful conversations across the company organized virtually in, you know, platforms like this where like, you know, people of you know diverse background were sharing their stories, um, story of, of like, you know, uh, it's more difficult for me to understand how painful can be to be stopped by a cop <laughs> uh, on a highway. And like, you know, until people share those stories, uh, you know, it was difficult to rationalize them. And so I think that um, I don't want to lose that emphasis and that, um, you know, motion, if you want to continuing to raise the awareness of people inside of such a massive organization like Amazon about those stories and you know what else can we do to give like you know more diversity to our team more inclusion and more you know equity access to to everybody so i think that uh you know there is a very long way <laughs> to go um but the fact that this happened this year in such a powerful way is at least um you know the beginning of something you know different i feel because you know two years ago you called you and call you were saying like you know five years ago five years ago we didn't have this and now we do and so i think that that's my hope you know, that um the painful conversations that we are having and continue to have different levels of the company in like you know massive um you know type of like uh, zoom calls to more like uh you know small teams type of meetings are the beginning of something new that I hope to continue, um, you know, going forward. Well, and, and, and thank you for that. You know, I, I think there's an old, what's the old saying that, uh, uh, that chaos breeds success or success is born in the midst of chaos, you know, so uh, it, it is a very uh, chaotic time and it's a great time for corporations to kind of step up, you know, and, 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 and leverage, you know, this moment to uh, be even further intentional, you know, if, if you will. So how about we do this to close us out? All right. Uh, you know, if everyone can go around and just take, you know, 30 to 60 seconds to leave some type of like epic, profound, you know, statement, you know, no pressure, 
you know, but just something a, a, along what you feel uh, is important for, you know, these uh, diverse led startups, you know, to do when engaging with a corporation such as yourself, you know, how should they position themselves when they're, when they ping you on, 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 on LinkedIn, you know, or uh, uh, what advice, you know, would you give, you know, that, you know, diverse led startup in regards to being able to get an opportunity to at least have a meaningful, intentional conversation with you. And we can begin with, I'm, I'm picking on Michelle, Michelle. <laughs> well, one, thank you all for that. Sorry, I... No, no problem. No, thank you for the opportunity um, for to allow Verizon this platform. I think it's, um, uh, you know, it's very important to include corporations in this conversation and to hold us accountable. Um, I, I will say, you know, in regards to networking and, and reaching out, um, we do have certain pain points and certain things we look at uh, within our areas and within our foundation. And so we work with organizations and nonprofits that focus on those areas. Um, and so uh, typically I tell people when they reach out, you know, make sure you understand what the corporation does what in community engagement, what aspect they focus on. Um, is this of something that you think you could get support behind? Um, and then figure out a way that um, can not only uh, highlight your organization, but what is the benefit to the corporation as well for working with you? And, you know, what do they get? What is the buy-in for them? Um, is it, whether it's a volunteer opportunity, um, you know, when someone tells me we have a golf tournament, we want Verizon to sponsor that, that, that doesn't interest me, to be honest, because that's not what I do. I'm not in marketing. I'm in community engagement. Um, and so I want to help solve you, help you solve a problem. Um, you know, Verizon, the marketing aspect, that's great. You can put our logo on the back of a t-shirt, but, you know, you're talking about corporate Corporations like Facebook and Verizon and Microsoft, that, that's not as of importance as if you can say, hey, we have this amazing program, we're investing into the community, and this fits in something where we're closing the digital divide. That's going to spark my ear, you know, that's going to get my interest. So um, think about what you're approaching a corporation about, do your homework, um, and then come with them with something that's tangible um, and that's feasible and that makes sense. Mm. Gems, gems, okay. A, a tough act to follow. Who, who's next? Who's next? I'll go next. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, Darrell. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, just a couple of things. One, I think from the corporation standpoint, I think this is an opportunity for us to uh, come together and be able to help. You know, I definitely would love to connect with everyone here um, because, you know, if we're doing work in the communities and then, you know, we can kind of band together where it's, you know, I'm bringing some money, you're bringing some devices or vice versa or whatever the case may be. Um, I think we can have a multiplier effect. And I think, you know, a, a topic as big as this, I think this is when the time for corporations to put their ego aside and, you know, Microsoft and even Amazon, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's do something to help the community. Um, but in, in, in terms of working with corporations, um, hands down, you know, number one, have your your, your your ish together. You know, when 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 you know when you're 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 connecting with someone. Um, I mean, I, th that should go without saying. But I think the other biggest advice that I can get is, no matter how much you love yourself, your company, your idea, your whatever, and you think it's the 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 next best thing since sliced bread. Um, be really, really humble. Um, stop thinking that because you're talking to a big corporation that we just have all these handouts for you and that you're entitled to it. Put it that way. Um, the biggest advice that I can, can I can give is, you know, make a relationship. Uh, almost don't even ask for anything except for maybe some advice, some mentoring. Um, and then, you know, get into a relationship, you know, some small partnership initially and it will grow i mean i know to speak for us at microsoft across the different business groups and initiatives it's very much like oh you're already working with them oh let, well let me help out too let me help out too let me help out too because uh you know at that point you kind of pass the credibility and the validity test because you're already doing business with us. So it really just opens the door for bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger things. So, um, you know, just, just be really humble, crawl before you walk and not try to just hit a home run on, on your first um, encounter. 
Jam, Jam. And you guys are coming in strong. Okay, okay. Well, hey, hey, Willie, Willie, it's on I'm, you. I'm glad the rail and the shell went before me. Um, because they 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 pretty <laughs> much summed it up for everybody, I think, at this point. Um plus one to everything they said, I would just add really quickly, just double down on your investment right now, right? What I mean by that is again, right now, everything's hot, right? Like startups, opportunities company investments, the willingness to support you, this is your time. So double down on all these amazing resources programs that we've shared in this panel and beyond. Um, because right now this is a this is a this is a go moment. So just double down on your outreach, your effort to try to support what you uh, to get what you need from a support perspective to help you grow your business. Awesome. All right. So we'll go to uh, to Janae and then we have um, 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 yeah. LL, will you close this out? Um, yeah, no, I guess I would just say, you know, it's it's really about relationship at, at the end of the day. Right. Like, you know, it's it's great to apply to a program and apply to as many as you can, because like uh, Willie was saying, this is your time. Right. And there's a ton of resources out there and available. So make sure you take advantage of as many as you can. Um, but realize that, you know, while it's great to, to to apply to a program, it's even better to know someone, you know, like like the folks on this call and to build relationships with people who are not only kind of involved in those programs, but, you know, are willing to help you, are passionate about what we're talking about, that can be that inside man to kind of help you get through the door and help you meet the right people. And so, you know, relationships, relationships, relationships. Um, and, and that can just be, you know, reaching out to one of us, reaching out to any of the other panels that, that, that they've had um, and just talking and forming a relationship, not asking for anything, but just saying, hey, I just I think what you're doing is interesting. Here's what I'm doing. Let's just form a relationship so that when those opportunities do come come around, um, we can say, hey, this person applied for this program. And I also know them and I also, you know, am, am willing to kind of go the extra mile for them. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I remember relationship. I remember that when I was a startup founder and I had to fundraise, I think that, uh, you know, following what Darrell said, like, you know, if you start asking for advice, it's always a great strategy because people respond to that because they feel that, like, you know, they are valued if they you want their advice. And so I think it's a great way to begin the conversation. Um, and so, uh, you know, I want to uh, agree with that and double down. I mean, that was one of my learning that, like, you know, instead of go and say, oh, I'm fundraising and I'm looking for money, say, you know, I'm building a company and I love your advice. And I think that the response rate of that message is always much higher. And, um, and also, like, you know, you are sort of allowing them to give back. Um, and then... For sure like use all of the resources and emails and like you know uh, programs that you've been um we've been sharing today because uh we want to definitely like at amazon but i'm sure microsoft facebook and all of the other companies represented here like and we want to find you uh because i mean it's in our common joint best interest so thank you for having me it was great well, hey, uh, thank you, uh, each one of our panelists. I have understanding the need, what's the mutual win, double down on your investment, you know, be humble, relationships, 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 and ask for advice first. Um, so I just put that into the chat. I mean, thank you guys so much, you know, uh, Willie, uh, Elio, uh, Janae, Darrell, Michelle, you guys were awesome. I look forward to being able just to, you know, build with you guys, just to kind of see you continue to help, you know, uh, you know, create a, a, a profitable and a wealth creating opportunity for our diverse led startups. So thank you for your time. This was dope. This is awesome. Joey, we appreciate you and your leadership King. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to the next one. Oh, you were great. Yes. Thanks so much. Thank Bye. you. Have a good Bye. year. Bye.